Hello and welcome to the course Machinery for Diagnosis and Signal Processing. Today's topic is unbalanced detection. Now, uh, what are unbalanced forces? So, uh, rotor is said to be balanced when uh, the center of gravity of the rotor and the axis of rotation coincides with each other and uh, when the rotor rotates then it is said to be completely balanced. But when the center of gravity and the axis of rotation of the shaft, rotor shaft, it does not coincide with each other, then uh, unbalanced forces uh, are developed and uh, the rotor becomes unbalanced and because of the unbalance, the after effect of the unbalance is vibrations. So, uh, the rotor and the shaft starts vibrating. So, basically it is, it is the eccentricity of the center of gravity and the axis of rotation uh, which actually causes the unbalance. Now there are two types of unbalance. First is static unbalance, another one is dynamic unbalance. Generally, uh, the rotors whose diameter is very very large as compared to the thickness of the rotor, then such rotors are termed as planar rotors and the balancing of such planar rotors are called static unbalance and the rotors whose diameter is less as compared to the width of the rotor or long rotors, they are termed as dynamic unbalance. Okay. So, unbalance created in such a long rotors are called dynamic unbalance whereas uh, a planar rotors or unbalance uh, induced in a planar rotors uh, are, are an example of static unbalance. Now we will see this static unbalance and dynamic unbalance in a bit detail. Now here we can see that the diameter of the rotor is very very large as compared to the thickness of the rotor and such rotors are called planar rotors and any unbalance in the planar rotor can be rectified by using static unbalance method or the unbalance is termed as uh, static unbalance whereas uh, when the thickness of the rotor is very very large as compared to the diameter of the rotor then the unbalance induced in such long rotors are termed as dynamic unbalance or the balancing of such a long ro rotors can be done dynamically. So that is the basic difference between uh, static unbalance and dynamic unbalance. Uh, rotor rotor uh, unbalance are either termed as static, uh, static unbalance or dynamic unbalance. Now why unbalance occurs? What are the reasons uh, for uh, rotor to get unbalanced? The first is manufacturing defects. That means the mass of the rotor is not uniformly distributed. Uh, across the center of the rotor and uh, the masses are non-uniformly distributed because of the poor casting methods or uh, blow holes present in the rotor. So that is manufacturing defects. So due to manufacturing defects, uh, the rotor get unbalanced because the mass is not uniformly distributed. The second reason may be installation error so, proper alignment is not maintained, proper centers are not maintained, uh, the shafts are not coupled uh, coaxially. So, these are some of the reasons uh, because of which uh, the rotor get unbalanced. So, installation error uh, can be one of the uh, reason of unbalance. The third reason may be operational maintenance issues okay uh, that is uh, cleaning or deposits 
for example, uh, the ID fan uh, in the chimney. Uh, so, lot of uh, uh, lot of contamination uh, get deposited on the ID fan, uh, uh, which are coming from the flue gases. And uh, these contaminations uh, with the flue gases are deposited on the ID fan and uh, the balancing of the rotor or balancing of the fan get disturbed. So, proper maintenance, proper cleaning of uh, the fan is very, very necessary. Otherwise, uh, these uh, suspended particles in the flue gases, they keep on depositing on the fan and they uh, disturb the balancing and because of that the ID fan may get uh, unbalanced. So, these are some of the reasons uh, why the rotors get unbalanced. And next is what are the ISO standards because uh, there are permissible unbalance uh, in every rotor. So, there are various ISO standards uh, which gives us about the permissible limit of the unbalance. So, in this chart, the x axis uh, indicates the speed and the y axis indicates the acceptable residual unbalance per unit of the rotor weight. Okay? So, this is the acceptable unbalance, residual unbalance uh, per unit weight of the rotor. So, whatever may be the weight of the rotor, uh, you need to multiply it with the accept acceptable residual unbalance uh, factor. And uh, these uh, slant line indicates that is G1, G2.5, G6.3, G16, G40. These are the various mechanical components uh, which uh, you are using. Okay? So, the description of this G1, G2.5, G6.3, all these are available in the next slide. And the ISO standard which gives uh, the residual unbalance, acceptable residual unbalance per uh, weight of the rotor is indicated by ISO uh, 1940-1973. So, 1940-1973, these are the ISO standards which gives the uh, residual imbalance. Now, here uh, these G codes are explained. For example, uh, G1 indicates that type recorder or a photograph driver, grinding machine drives. Uh, G2.5 indicates gas and steam turbines, rigid turbo generator, rotors, turbo compressors machine tool drives, small electrical armatures, turbine driven pumps, G6.3 are parts or process plant machines, marine main turbine gears, centrifugal pumps, etc. So, uh, these are the various uh, mechanical components and these are the, uh, the codes which are required to find out the residual acceptable level of unbalance from the chart. Now, what are the effects of unbalance? So, uh, this is one example of uh, paper manufacturing machine. Now, if you visit a paper manufacturing machine, then uh, there are series of uh, rollers are arranged and uh, the paper is allowed to pass in between these uh, hot rollers. But when uh, these hot rollers get unbalanced, then the gap between the top roller and the bottom roller uh, becomes uneven. Uh, at uh, one end, it may be less, at other end, it may be high and because of that, uh, the paper thickness also varies and uh, uh, there are chances of paper breakage. Okay? So, uh, the, this is one effect I have explained uh, from paper industry. There are number of 
uh, undue effects of unbalance. Unbalance is something uh, not acceptable thing and it has to be avoided at all possible steps. Now how to detect an unbalance? So particularly uh, by doing a vibration analysis, uh, we can detect uh, the rotor unbalance. Uh, first thing, first indication is uh, you can see a prominent peak at 1 into radial vibrations that is 1 into the RPM of the rotor. So if you are seeing a prominent peak at 1x uh, position then you can say that there may be uh, rotor unbalance. Vibration is strongly harmonic that means uh, the, the prominent peaks are repeated at it harmonic speeds. Magnitude of vibration increases with rotor speed. Okay? So, uh, the level of vibrations increases with the rotor speed. Vibration in phase between the support bearings. Okay? So, these are some of the indications, indicators by which you can detect the rotor imbalance uh, from vibration analysis. Next is effect of unbalance. So, uh, as I said, unbalance is uh, something undesirable. So, the effects of unbalance is excessive load at support bearing, increase in the fatigue load on the rotor, leads to problems like bearing faults, rotors, uh, stator rub, loose foundation, etc. Now, Next is what are the methods of field balancing. Now, a rotor can be balanced by a balancing machine. So, a balancing complete balancing machine is there and by using a balancing machine we can balance the rotor. But most of the time or sometimes it is not possible to take the rotor from the machine and uh, put it in on, on the balancing machine. So, in such situations, uh, the rotors are, ba are balanced at the position itself. It is called in situ balancing or it is also called as field balancing. Okay? So, uh, the rotors which are not possible to take out from the machine, uh, such rotors are balanced by in situ balancing and uh, the rotors which can be taken, taken out from the machine, uh, then such rotors are balanced on the balancing machine. Just like uh, 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 car tires, tire has to be taken out from the car and it has to be balanced on the balancing machine. But uh, the rotors which are not possible to take out from the machine, then in, in situ balancing are performed. Similarly, uh, the balancing methods are also categorized into single plane balancing and multi plane balancing. As I said, uh, the single plane balancing means uh, the diameter of the rotor is very, very large as compared to the thickness. Such rotors are balanced by using single plane balancing and uh, examples are single channel phase and vibration measurement and three point vibration measurement. Then multi plane balancing or it is also called as dynamic balancing. That means uh, the diameter is very, very less as compared to the length of the rotor. Uh, then such rotors requires multiplane balancing. So this is something about uh, the unbalanced detection. So thank you very much. Thanks.